Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. Your faithfulness endures to all generations. You establish the earth and it abides. They continue this day according to your ordinances. And let the people say amen. It is a new season, Gifted Podcast listening community, and we are glad to serve you. Our primary purpose for this podcast is to make the word of God as practical as possible. God continue to bless you as you devote your time to the hearing of the word of God. Introducing the teaching ministry of Pastor Kwame. My name is Stephanie. We thank God it's Friday. This is also the day the Lord has made and we choose to rejoice and be glad in it. Father of life, Father of creation, Father of all things. You are the helper of the helpless. You are the reason that everything exists. You made it for yourself, for your pleasure and for your purpose. Because you are perfect in all your ways, we will forever worship you. It is out of your mind that we came into existence. We owe our lives. We owe our everything to you. You've called us into a relationship. You've made us your children. And so we record these things and our heart is filled with gratitude. Our heart is filled with praise because you alone deserve it. For the rest of our days, we will thank you. I pray for you, child of God, that you be strengthened. Pray for you that you will lay hold on his eternal strength that you will lay hold on his hand and you will be able to walk through this life knowing that my God is able to keep me to protect and preserve me no matter what I go through he is my shield my strength and my buckler a God who loves me for free when I didn't even love myself greater love as no man that a God who will lay down his life for you and I We consider all of this and we say, thank you, God. This day, we pray that lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is a kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen and amen. God bless you. We are still in 2 Thessalonians chapter number 3, division number 5. May the Lord direct your heart into the love of God and into the patience of Christ. We want to wrap up the string title the qualitative and the quantitative advantages of a divinely directed heart a heart that is directed by God the benefits thereof and I want to just I know we can talk and talk about this and talk about this and talk about this but it's Friday I want to lay it raw before you I want to lay it raw before you. It might not be very upbeat, but somebody has to tell the truth. You know what I mean? So, the things I'm going to share with you is the is based on the fact that your heart belongs to God. Your heart belongs to God. And God will lead your heart into his love one of the things that I want to tell you is this God wants you to want him God wants you to want him amen he wants you to want him and, and that means that he's not going to force you to want him. I want to beg you in the name of God that as you go through life, do your very best to give your heart to God. Because if your heart is not in, in God... you will soon realize that nobody cares about you but God. You will soon realize that nobody really loves you but God. I don't know your age. I don't know your story. 
I don't know how happy you are in life. I don't know how sad you are in life. But I want to be raw with you. Give your heart to God. You can be a Christian and still you have not really given your heart to God. We are going to enter into very difficult times. And if your heart is not in God's hands, it is really very difficult for you to cope. So I pray that as God direct, you know, when we talked about direction, as much as I made it that you are helpless without a director, the reason why he's not a detector by the director is because you have to take the direction to be directed. If you don't take the direction, another voice will direct you. So I want to beg you and beseech you by the mercies of God that try your very best and give your whole heart to God. Taste and see that God is good. Be real about this God thing. And you will realize that you have secured your heart for a better tomorrow. Give your heart to God because your heart is for God. I want you to pray that God, how do I give my heart to you? You see, one of the things I am so glad about is God is so real you don't need me to experience God if you come to a place you say God take my heart I'm telling you you need to give your heart to God I need to give my heart to God it's a daily allowing God to direct my heart Because life can steal your heart from God. Money can steal your heart from God. People can steal your heart from God. The pressures of life can steal your heart from God. So you must make a conscious decision to always give your heart to God. All right. The first thing I want to say is that Everything your heart is looking for doesn't satisfy your heart. Everything your heart is looking for doesn't satisfy your heart. I am yet to find out something in this life that will satisfy your heart. Nothing in this world will satisfy your heart. So I want you to give your heart to God. Whatever it means, pray that prayer. And God will start telling you how to let go of your heart in your hands. Because nothing in this world will satisfy One of the things that God wanted to do for humanity, or one of the things God has in mind, is to be the source of our lives. God wants to be the source of our lives. God wants to be the helper of our lives. He wants to be the protector of our lives. But he wants to be. You understand? Because it will take us allowing him to be for him to be. His intention is to be our God and we become his people. But Time and time again, man is not 
okay when God is his God. Man is only okay when God is God when he's in trouble. But when man is happy, he doesn't want God to be his God. When man has everything he's looking for, he doesn't want God to be his God. Man only wants God when he's in trouble. And because of that, man has not learned how to walk with God both in good times and bad times. But God has also bound his nature to love. And love means a choice to or not to make God your God. So, he is willing to be your God but you have to be willing to make him your God and when you make him your God you have to actually make him your God what it means is that he is now going to be God over you to a point that his life must control your life. That is how you find fulfillment. So, God's intention in all of this is to draw you to himself so that you can find a sense of completeness to enjoy the things he gives you. Once he says, Now seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. It means that the kingdom of God and his righteousness is the plate on which things are added unto. Once you come to God, which is the kingdom, once you come to him, which is the righteousness, It is that which it takes to enjoy marriage. It is that which it takes to enjoy money. Let me say something. Even though I'm making sense, I've not made a point yet. What I want you to understand before I finish this is that until your heart is in God, you cannot enjoy anything at all. As a matter of fact, God can give you what you want and take the joy out of what you want. Let me explain it. Satisfaction comes from God. Happiness comes from God. Joy comes from God. And God has placed a little bit of himself in things that are enjoyable. Do you understand? If you bite a mango, if you bite a fruit and it tastes good, God has placed himself in those things that we enjoy. If you fall in love with a woman, it is God who has placed that feeling in that bond. If you enjoy food, so all of those things, that the thing uh, help me Jesus what makes those things enjoyable it is God who has put that joy in it the joy itself is not in it but it is God who has placed it in it so what happened is that when you don't include God in your heart you will have the thing but the joy will not be the God says you will receive those things and you will have them but you will realize that why it's so empty that is because it is god who plays the pleasure in those things are you understanding me the pleasure of marriage it is god who plays it in it so if you bypass god into marriage god can take the pleasure out you will have the marriage but you will not have the pleasure because marriage and pleasure don't come together it is god who has made it like that 
Are you understanding me? So the things you want, they in themselves don't have the joy that they advertise. It is God who has added it. Let me give you a funny example. Satisfaction, like to eat and be full. It is experience that God has given to us. But if God takes that satisfaction of you will eat and eat and still not be full, even though the food is actually going to your stomach, do you understand that? So God is your end, not heaven. God is your end, not heaven. God is your source, not heaven. What I mean is that the chief purpose of man is to know God. That is where the whole thing is heading towards. Do you understand? Because to be yourself is to know God. That's why I want to encourage you to give your heart to God. So that you can sense that I am becoming a person whose heart is in God's hands. And I didn't really share the qualitative and the quantitative thing. I didn't share. I might write a book on that, but I didn't really share. Because when your heart goes into God's love, you realize that all your days, you will begin to walk in the counsel and in the will and the wisdom of God. And the things that moves the world will not move you. Because you'll be sold out for God so much that your appetite, your desires, your happiness will now begin to align itself with a divine and a holy appetite. And out of your life, many will be blessed. Many will be blessed. Your life will impact many people. You will bring healing and help to many people. Because you have given your heart to God. You will impact many people. You will change lives. You will turn things around. So I want to sell you the idea that continual giving your heart to God by praying and stepping into God by asking him to take over your life because your problems are actually because of where you are You don't have a problem, but it's because of where you are, that's where there are problems. You happen to be on a planet that is a problematic planet. When it snows in America, it gets cold. You are cold not because of anything, but because you are in America. This thing called life, this thing called this world, it is a problem place. So if you have come to this world, you are going to face problems. So all the problems around you, it is because you are living this life. You are also here. So all the hard weather, you also see your portion of it. But they that put their trust in God, and continue to press and love him, they shall be like Mount Zion that cannot be moved. The little faith you have in God is what you will use to deliver your children when they are sick at 2 a.m. The little, everybody will beat a battle of some kind. Everybody will meet a challenge of some kind. And if your heart is in God, your strength is mighty. 
I encourage you to fall in love with God. Because there are strongholds in this life. You don't want to fall into any of them. Give your heart to God. Let him rule your heart. Let him be the king over your heart. So he can direct you. We didn't even touch the second one. It says your heart will be directed into God's love and into Christ's patience. Maybe next week by this Holy Spirit direction, we might treat it. But I feel like I want to prep us for a week of fasting in either in the month of October or somewhere in the ending of October. May God help you give your heart to him. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.